Talking about deserts conjures images of a hot, dry, barren landscape devoid of water. This is indeed accurate, as a desert is typically defined as a dry area of the Earth's surface with low rainfall and extreme temperatures. These conditions make it challenging to cultivate various crops for agriculture. Ideally, plants require a growing medium, water, light, wind, and nutrients to thrive. However, in arid lands like deserts, these factors are scarce. The sandy soil prevalent across much of the Middle East poses a significant barrier to optimizing plant growth. The soil's large pores result in high infiltration rates, making it difficult for the soil to retain water. Another critical factor is water. The low rainfall results in very limited water availability for irrigation. Additionally, the high salt content reduces soil elements and is toxic or poisonous to plants. So, is it possible to transform deserts into fertile land? There's the story of an African farmer named Yakuba Sawadogo, who over the last 30 years traveled across deserts to revive barren lands. His methods proved successful improving soil quality. However, it took Yakuba 30 years to achieve this. This raises a question. Is it possible to turn deserts into fertile lands quickly? Saudi Arabia offers a positive answer. Despite being the 13th largest country in the world, about 95% of Saudi Arabia's territory is desert, with only about 1.45% of the land capable of supporting plant growth. The difficulty in sustaining plant life is primarily due to the lack of freshwater sources such as rivers in Saudi Arabia. Water sources are limited to the Persian Gulf and Red Sea coastlines, primarily used for transporting crude oil. Yet, Saudi Arabia has managed to transform its vast deserts into productive agricultural land. For comparison, in 1976, the area planted with vegetation was about 400,000 hectares or approximately 1,600 square kilometers. By 1993, this area had expanded to 8 million hectares or about 32,000 square kilometers. This means that in just 17 years, the fertile land in Saudi Arabia increased 20-fold. Additionally, according to SaudiGazette.com, comma fruit production in Saudi Arabia surged by 194% in the last six years by the end of 2020. Saudi Arabia transforms its deserts into fertile agricultural lands using center pivot irrigation CPI, technology, a method that involves a machine irrigating a large circular area with a sprinkler moved by wheels. This technology was first invented by Frank Zeibach, a farmer from Nebraska, USA, in 1947. The CPI system comprises several components. The first is the pivot point, which serves as the main axis as the pivot machine moves and where water first enters the pivot pipe. This section houses the control panel, the control center hardware of the machine. The control panel is responsible for commanding the machine to start, stop, or change direction. Meanwhile, long pipes called spans distribute water sprayed by the machine's sprinklers. Water is pumped from a well in the center of the circle and sprayed directly above the crops. This method is considered effective for irrigating up to 140 hectares of farmland and is relatively easy to apply. However, the use of this technology significantly contributes to the depletion of groundwater levels. Similarly, China has undertaken efforts to convert its sandy lands, which cover 27% of the country's territory and are rapidly expanding, into agricultural lands. The Gobi Desert, the driest desert on Earth, affects over 400 million people by causing the loss of agricultural land and inflicting billions of dollars in economic damage. However, the Chinese government has aggressively started converting barren lands into farmlands using various methods. One such method is the Great Green Wall, a project aiming to create a 4,500 kilometers long forest to contain the expansion of the Gobi Desert. If the plan proceeds as expected, the forested area, currently at 5%, is projected to reach 50% of the country's territory by 2050. This program involves the participation of all Chinese citizens with every individual over the age of 18 required to plant three trees. 
Villagers are funded to plant seedlings, and in some locations, the government will expropriate private land for the program. Another method used by China is the Kerez system, a network of tunnels designed to transport water from nearby mountains to the arid plains of Xinjiang, where the Uyghur population resides. This method has been in existence since the 19th century, with tunnels extending over 2,500 kilometers. The Kerez wells penetrate deep into the earth and connect to long horizontal tunnels, serving as a water supply and preventing evaporation, especially since temperatures can approach 50 degrees Celsius in the summer. To date, the total length of the Kerez has doubled, with more than 1,000 Kerez in Turpan. This system remains firmly embedded underground, safely conveying precious water without the risk of evaporation from sun exposure. In the Kubuki Desert region, the government has undertaken a greening project known as the Polylactic Acid Sand Barrier, using bags made from fermented corn or cassava fibers filled with desert sand and arranged in a grid pattern. This sand barrier technology functions to reduce wind speed at the desert surface by up to 50%. The project, initiated in 1988, has seen positive changes, converting about 6,000 kilometers or one-third of the Kubuki Desert into productive land. In addition to the Kerez system used in Xinjiang, China has also employed a technology developed by two scientists from Chongqing Jiao Tong University since 2013. This technology involves an environmentally friendly solution made of sodium carboxymethyl cellulose, a component also found in plant cell walls, combined with desert sand. This paste forms elastic bonds between sand grains. When mixed with desert sand in arid environments, it can retain water and nutrients essential for plant growth. Testing has shown that flowers and vegetables can grow normally across nearly 500 hectares of sand in just six months.